And they clapped and they cheered, even a standing ovation for the New Zealand Prime Minister as she was promoting New Zealand's gun control laws to an international audience this morning at Harvard, no less. But back home, a spate of gang shootings have Aucklanders worried. Here's the Prime Minister in the US. In the past 10 years, we have passed laws that include everything from the introduction of gay marriage and the banning of conversion therapy right through to embedding a 1.5 degree climate change target into law, banning military-style semi-automatics and assault rifles, <laughs> and the decriminalisation of abortion. I'm joined in the studio now, 10 after 7, by Labor MP Senior Minister David Parker. Good morning, Morena. Good morning. National Deputy Leader Nicola Willis with us as well. Good morning. Good morning. What did you make of that? Oh, well, good on her. I mean, we all want to see New Zealand on the world stage, and some of the laws she's talking about are things that have actually been supported across our parliament. And so I think all New Zealanders feel proud when we see ourselves represented overseas. Some of our viewers this morning have been a bit upset that she's out there promoting our gun laws while we've got a spate of shootings in Auckland. You know, I was talking to a policeman not that long ago uh, who was telling me he feels a lot safer when he goes to these incidents knowing that gangs are much less likely to have semi-automatics. So, you know, uh, I accept that, you know, if I was a policeman, I'd be pleased with those gun changes. It hasn't, of course, dealt with all of the gang problems in society. Do you think the gangs gave back their semi-automatics? Uh, I think I think that the well yes in in the main really? you know there, which there are far there which are gangs gave there are far fewer semi-automatics for guns to acquire illegally than there used to be because you can't buy them anywhere in New Zealand the few remaining semi-automatics that are out there are held illegally by people and when they're found they're taken off people so the number of semi-automatics has gone down dramatically Nicola, in New Zealand do you agree with the minister that the gangs gave guns guns back no the gangs kept their guns uh, and law-abiding people handed in their guns. And now we have a situation where we're getting multiple shootings a night in Auckland. And that's not OK. And that's actually why National has promoted firearm prohibition orders with search powers for police. We've got to go after the bad people, uh, not just create more rules for law-abiding people. Are you saying that these recent incidents involved semi-automatics? Because I haven't seen that reported. No, but the, guns the, are guns are guns. I mean, yeah, there, I know, but you were the point that was saying about semi-automatics. You know, the point that the Prime Minister made is we've taken the worst guns out of society. Mm. Yeah, there may be still a few around illegally, but there are thousands and thousands fewer than there were. OK. But when a gun is shot at your house in the middle of the night... You don't care what it is. It's a bad gun. It's well, a bad gun. To be honest, I'd rather it was a shotgun than a semi-automatic, personally. <laughs> this is what we've come to. <laughs> well, we're now I defining... think, I, I'm sorry, Minister, for people who've had... Who, who, innocent people who've had their homes shot up this week, they will find that comment... Abhorrent, I would think. Well, uh, I told you that I know that the police feel safer now that there are fewer semi-automatics out there. So do I. Uh, I but it would be better if it was a shotgun. I'm absolutely unforgiving of any illegal activity, especially with guns, but I do make the point, as the Prime Minister made, which is where this started, that we are better off as a society because we have banned and got rid of just about all of those semi-automatics. All right, have a listen to, uh, this is from our guest yesterday, Billy McFarlane, uh, who is a gang rehabilitation expert. He's spent many years in jail himself, but has turned his life around and is helping others. Here's what he had to say about the number of gang members in this country. Um, I believe we already have more, more gang members in the country than we've got police. Well, the estimate is 7,000. Yeah, but I think they're counting the main gang, the main, main gangs, but there's, there's like around 50 street gangs in Auckland alone. I don't think we're counting all the numbers and we're not counting the people that are associated with gangs that are, that are not coming into the police's, um, under the police's radar. So, you know, those, those figures, in my opinion, are grossly underestimated. Do you think, Nicola, we have more gang members in New Zealand than police? Uh, the evidence is that the number of gang members is growing a lot faster than the number of police. And I think we are getting to that point in some areas. In Tauranga, uh, they feel a bit outnumbered. And the issue is that we shouldn't have growing gang numbers in New Zealand. We should have police able to go after them and make it clear being a member of an organised criminal organisation is not something you can get away with. David, do you accept that we have a faster rate of, a tr of um, recruitment for gang members than we do cops? 
Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that, but I find it rather galling, Nicola. When you're in government, police numbers dropped. Since we've come to power, we've got 1,700 extra policemen out there. We've got an anti-organised crime unit that didn't exist when you're in government. So, yes, look, society's not perfect, but we are giving the resources to the police that they need to do their job. OK. Do you accept that we have a larger gang problem now than when you came into office? Uh, I think that society, including gangs, have become at times more violent. I'm going to condition that a little bit. Overall, violent offences by gang members are down, but some of this inter-gang welfare is up. Gun violence is up. 2021, the worst year in the last 15 for gun, gun violence. Gun violence is up, and by, by huge margin, it's mainly between gangs. And part of that, as we all know, is because we've had these 501s sent back yes, from Australia. totally. So, so why not support Nicola's idea of warrantless searches for gang members who've got guns. Well, Why not support Nicole McKee's bill, the ACT MP, who, who put this bill before Parliament, which would have said, if a cop goes into a gang pad, find you with a gun, we can take your assets. Well, there's, there's more than one question there. We actually have introduced firearm prohibition orders so that gang members uh, you know, can't, can't legally get a gun. We've also change the law to make sure that if a gun is found in gang premises, you can charge everyone rather than everyone denying, saying, it's not my gun and therefore no one being able to be charged. Now, if you're in a premises or even a vehicle where there is a gun present, everyone who is around the gun can be charged in respect of that gun rather than everyone denying responsibility. So we have toughened up on gun laws. Ryan, the truth is, this government is soft on gangs. My colleague Simeon Brown introduced a bill to Parliament which would have banned the government from providing any funding to gangs, and Labor opposed that bill. This is the same government that gave oh. $2.75 million to the mongrel mob to run a drug rehab programme. The, the audacity so of that, when you drop police numbers and didn't have an anti-gang unit, we've got both. I just can't know how you can stand up and say that. And the gangs are worse, and you've, re and you've denied the extra powers for the police. Sass, sass, sass is all I can say <laughs> about that exchange. Um, I want to move on very quickly to talk about them, um, because we've only got a couple of minutes left, probably one, I'm being told. Um, China and the Pacific. Uh, mm. Should we be really worried about this? Should Anaya Mahuta be, as has Jerry Brownlee suggested, be out there actually following <laughs> the uh, Chinese foreign minister around the Pacific to try and make sure that our interests are taken care of here too? Um, well, she's just been in Fiji in the last few weeks and no doubt these issues will have been raised. Yeah, there is more of a contest for uh, between the superpowers in the Pacific, including China. The US's influence has waded. The EU's doing a little bit more, but the influence of China in the Pacific is greater than it was. Uh, we and Australia both uh, take the security issues in the Pacific very seriously. Uh, and we try to and successfully maintain good relationships with those Pacific countries, some of them I see have already rejected the, yes. the, the overtures that are being made. Which is good. Um, do you, what do you think, Nicola? Do you think that we are losing a grip on the Pacific? Well, I think it's another reminder of why we need to keep those relationships with our Pacific neighbours really strong. Mm. Actually, it's our Pacific family, uh, and we want to be part of uh, a global uh, st strength. That means that we actually represent our values and we hold our values. Yeah. Now, do you guys ever get applauded for taking a sip of your drink? <laughs> that, that has not happened to me. There's happened. always hope, Nicola. Yeah, okay. well, maybe this is in my future. The things I can aspire to. Hey, thank you both so much for coming in this morning. Good to okay. see you. That is Labor Senior Minister David Parker and National Deputy Leader Nicola Willis.